320 Mentor Channel. Thanks for watching. Hi there. Cost index is one of those subjects which is not always well understood by pilots. In this Airbus Wind video, I want to provide you instructors with some material to allow you to brief your trainees on what cost index is, what it's not, and also offer some guidance on its use in the cockpit. The background is that we're living in a commercial world. Airlines need to make a profit, and profit is revenue minus costs. In the cockpit, pilots have no control over the revenue generated on a flight, but they do have a degree of control over the costs incurred during a flight. Now let's look at these costs. Some are fixed costs or overheads. Pilots have no control over these. Some of the costs are linked to the duration of the flight. For example, airlines might pay for some components per flight hour. Another example would be flight crew pay. And the other cost is the cost of fuel burnt. If we look at these last two costs, pilots can influence these by their choice of cruise speed. If pilots fly fast, time costs will be reduced, but more fuel will be burnt. If they fly slower, they will nearly always save fuel, but the time cost of the flight will increase. So, what is the best solution? Well, there's no single answer to this. If you operate in a region where fuel is very expensive, you're probably best off flying slowly. If your crew pay has a high element of flight time pay, or your company has some major power by the hour contracts, flying faster might be an option. The issue is, what is more costly? A few kilograms more fuel, or a few minutes extra flying time? Now this is what cost index does. Cost index is an exchange rate between the cost of time and the cost of fuel. So a high cost index means that for your airline, flight time is very important. A low cost index means that fuel costs dominate. And as an example, a cost index of 80 means that one minute more flying time costs the same as 80 kilograms of fuel. You enter the cost index into the FMS. The FMS then combines this with its onboard performance database and produces a managed speed. Sure, if you vary the cost index, speed will change. But remember, that is not the purpose of cost index. It's worthwhile considering that to calculate a cost index, you need access to your airline's accountancy department. You need to know pay rates, lease rates and fuel costs. In the cockpit, you've no way of knowing all this data, so don't go changing it. These figures will vary from one airline to another. So if you're flying and you look at your nav display, you see a competitor's aircraft, same type, route and altitude as you, but going faster or slower, it could well be that he is flying to a different cost index to you, just due to the differences in your airline's costs. So, remember, our objective is to minimize mission costs, not just fuel burn. Cost index is an exchange rate between the cost of time and the cost of fuel. Cost index is what is used to ensure the best speed, the speed for lowest costs. Okay, so we now know what cost index really is, but how do you use it? Both your flight planning system on the ground and your FMS in the air have a mathematical model of the aircraft and convert cost index into a desired cruise mark number. So, before your flight, the flight plan is computed at optimum cruise mark number. And when you receive your flight plan, the times, fuel on board at each waypoint, and step climbs are all calculated. In flight, 
per crew should use the same cost index. If you fly at a different cost index, and hence different speeds, your actual flight will differ from the flight plan. The flight times, fuel on board, and rec max flight levels will deviate from predictions, and this leads to two problems. Firstly, a more expensive flight, and also a loss of crew confidence in predictions. This results over a period of time in crews uploading more contingency fuel, creating greater and greater fuel burns. Remember, the cost index is derived by people on the ground with access to your airline's finance details. In the cockpit, you simply do not have access to all of this data. The guidance is simple. Fly at the cost index used on your flight plan. With the information available to you in the cockpit, you simply cannot do any better. Before I finish, I would just like to touch upon a more complex issue. Are there any scenarios where changing the cruise speed is an option? The most common question relates to winds aloft. What happens if the en route winds have changed since your flight plan was produced? Well, firstly, remember, cost index is simply a ratio between time costs and fuel price. Wind does not come into the equation, so does not change cost index. So the answer is, if the winds you encounter differ from those on the flight plan, fly at cost index and simply, if needed, deviate from the flight plan flight levels to fly as close as possible to opt flight level and check your FOB at destination. Let's look at two further examples. Firstly, imagine that you're going to arrive at destination too early and that you know you're going to have to go into the hold. Here, you have two choices. Either you maintain your current speed, then burn extra fuel in the hold, or you slow down. In flying slower, you will usually burn less fuel, and there will be no holding. This is almost certainly a good option, and a choice that you can make from the cockpit. Our two pieces of guidance would be, modify your speed using the FMS's RTA function, and check the FOB at desk prediction in the FMS. The opposite scenario is not so clear cut. Imagine you're running late and that some of your passengers will miss onward connections. This could be costly for the airline in terms of compensation or hotel accommodation. So maybe you or your ops control center will consider speeding up. Well, firstly, you will save money in terms of airline time costs. Also, any compensation needs to be considered. But as a pilot, you are not aware of these. However, in the cockpit, you are fully aware of your fuel situation. By using the RTA function, you can assess how much more fuel you will burn. The OCC might need to know the extra fuel burn when making their assessment. But the key point is you will burn more fuel, so check FOB at destination. Okay then, to summarize, remember, cost index is purely an exchange rate equating the cost of time to the cost of fuel. It is not a speed control mechanism. By sticking to your flight plan cost index, you will fly at minimum cost, not the same as minimum fuel burn. So in the cockpit, do not improvise. Lastly, if there is an additional issue like a time constraint, you can consider changing your cruise speed. But remember, to make this decision, you might need help from your OCC. Use the RTA function, but always check fuel on board at destination. If you change plan, have you got enough fuel on board? I hope you found this video interesting and informative. Thank you very much.
8320 Mentor Channel. Thanks for watching.